The COVID-19 pandemic rocked the U.S. economy in ways we haven't seen since the Great Depression. Businesses were forced to shut down, millions of people lost their jobs, and families struggled like never before just to keep food on the table. In response, the federal government authorized several rounds of stimulus checks and expanded unemployment benefits to help Americans get through this crisis. And just when it seemed like the nation was turning a corner, with the economy gradually recovering, a new economic threat emerged. Rampant inflation has driven up the prices of everyday goods and services from gas to groceries. Meanwhile, paychecks simply aren't keeping up with the rising cost of living. The pain at the pump and the strain of sticker shock at the supermarket checkout are hitting family budgets hard. That's why the president and Congress have decided to act with another round of direct payments to give households some temporary relief and extra breathing room. Let's go over the key details. Amount. Most eligible Americans will receive a one-time $2,000 check from the IRS. Income thresholds. The full $2,000 goes to single filers making less than $75,000 and married joint filers making less than $150,000 in adjusted gross income based on 2021 or 2022 tax returns, whichever is most recent. Phase out, the payments start phasing out above those income thresholds, reducing incrementally for every $1,000 of income above the limit. Dependents, parents and guardians will receive an additional $500 per dependent child under age 18. Timeline. The IRS aims to have these economic relief payments, as they're calling them, delivered via paper check in the mail within 48 hours for most eligible Americans who already have their information on file from previous stimulus payments. So let's break down who exactly qualifies for this new stimulus check. Full $2,000 payments will go to individuals earning less than $75,000, married couples earning less than $150,000 combined, heads of households earning less than $112,500. For higher income levels, the checks will start phasing out at a rate of $50 for every $1,000 earned over those thresholds. So a single filer earning $80,000 would receive $1,850 due to the phase out. For heads of household, they can get the full $2,000 payment if their adjusted gross income was below $112,500. The amount decreases at incomes higher than that until the payment hits $0 at $127,000 of earnings. Married couples with dependents will get the full $2,000 for themselves, plus an additional $500 for each qualifying child under age 18. So, a family of four with two children under 18 and income under $150,000 would get $4,000 total between those four payments. As with the previous stimulus checks, this round of payments will be calculated based on either your latest tax return on file with the IRS in 2021 or 2020. Eligibility is also determined by having a valid social security number. Those without one who use an IRS individual taxpayer identification number to file taxes are unfortunately left out again on these payments. According to the Treasury Department, the first payments will be going out via direct deposit to millions of Americans who already have their banking information on file with the IRS from previous stimulus rounds. That process could begin as soon as this weekend. However, the vast majority of payments will be going out through the mail as physical checks or debit cards. The IRS and Treasury say they are prioritizing sending out these payments as rapidly as possible over the next couple of days. Their goal is to have most of these economic relief payment checks in the mail and delivered to homes across America within that 48-hour window from when the president signs the stimulus bill into law, which is expected to happen by Friday morning. Of course, given the sheer logistics of printing and sending nearly 200 million payments through the Postal Service, there is likely to be some lag time. But the White House and IRS have assured the public that they will be working around the clock in shifts to get these funds out as quickly as administratively possible. You can check the status of your payment and verify you qualify by using the IRS Get My Payment tool online, which was used for the previous stimulus rounds. Just enter your personal tax information as you would on your returns and it will show if you're eligible and an expected delivery date. So what do experts recommend once that $2,000 payment, 
or whatever amount you qualify for, arrives? It's a complicated question, as many families have found themselves in very different financial situations due to the pandemic's economic upheaval. For those who have managed to keep steady income during the crisis, financial advisors suggest using this stimulus as an opportunity to pay down debts like high interest credit cards, student loans, or other bills that have accrued. With interest rates rising, it's a particularly good time to knock out variable debts now before those monthly liabilities become even more burdensome. Any remaining funds could be diverted into an emergency savings account as a buffer, or even invested through a traditional IRA or Roth to take advantage of the tax benefits. However, for the millions of households who have fallen behind on rent or mortgages, lost jobs or income, or depleted whatever savings they had during this economic crunch, the priority should be on using this stimulus to cover urgent needs first. Food, shelter, utilities, transportation for work, these are all crucial expenses to stabilize day-to-day -day life. Experts advise making a budgeting plan and spending checklist as soon as that stimulus arrives to cover urgent essentials first, then allocating whatever might be left over into an emergency fund if possible. This round of $2,000 checks is also intended to provide a much-needed boost to the economy as a whole. With Americans receiving so much direct cash assistance, the hope is that a large portion of these funds will be spent on goods and services. Economists point out that lower- and middle-income families have a high propensity to spend these types of payments quickly, unlike wealthier households who may just put it into investments or savings. So, when tens of billions of dollars start flooding directly into circulation, it could provide a vital spark for sectors like retail, hospitality, travel, dining and more. Of course, one concern is that too much spending power could actually worsen the current inflation levels if consumer demand drastically outpaces what suppliers can keep up with. The administration is still trying to walk that tightrope of boosting economic activity without overheating things. Some analysts have projected this stimulus could help raise GDP by a full percentage point and bring growth above a 3% annualized level for the upcoming quarters. But the potential impacts, both positive and negative, remain to be seen depending on household behavior and how effectively policies can rein inflation back under control. Some lawmakers have proposed converting this into periodic direct payments until prices and costs stabilize similar to the monthly child tax credit payments that were in effect for the latter half of 2021. Others have suggested more targeted forms of relief, such as pausing federal student loan payments again, increasing health care subsidies and assistance programs, or providing additional tax rebates for lower-income households. On the energy front, there have been bipartisan calls for a federal gas tax holiday to help drivers struggling with high prices at the pump. This could potentially save Americans 18.24 cents per gallon if enacted. Heating assistance and utility relief funds may also be on the table as winter approaches and families start facing higher energy bills to keep homes warm. Of course, any additional stimulus measures will require congressional approval and consensus across the political aisle, something that has been challenging with the narrow divide in both chambers. Not everyone is on board with this new $2,000 stimulus plan, however. Critics have been quick to point out the huge price tag adding hundreds of billions to the federal deficit at a time when national debt is already at record levels. Lawmakers on the conservative side have blasted the payments as excessive and unnecessary at this stage of the economy's recovery when jobless rates have fallen and growth seems to be regaining momentum, despite inflation woes. There are also concerns from economists about overstimulating an already overheated economy that could inadvertently make the inflation crisis even worse by injecting too much money into circulation. Others argue that stimulus checks are an imprecise and inefficient way to help Americans most in need. They point out that much of the funds will go to households and individuals whose finances may not be as strained by the current conditions. Some opposition has even come from progressive lawmakers and policy experts who feel the amounts are too small to truly address the hardships faced by low- and middle-income families in the long run. There have been calls for more robust, permanent solutions like raising the minimum wage, expanding tax credits, reinforcing the social safety net, 
and enacting other systemic changes rather than temporary cash windfalls. Regardless of where one stands on these new stimulus payments, their impact, effective or not, is still surrounded by major uncertainties looking ahead. First and foremost, no one is quite sure yet how consumers and businesses will respond and whether the funds will be spent in ways that alleviate economic pressures or potentially exacerbate issues like inflation through excess demand. Experts are also uncertain about how semi permanent these high prices and cost of living increases may actually be. And whether further stimulus would just become an endless cycle without finding policy solutions to address deeper systemic issues. Geopolitical factors like the Russia Ukraine war, supply chain disruptions, domestic energy production, interest rates, and climate events also remain wild cards that could either reverse or exacerbate the economic conditions prompting this new stimulus in the first place.